Hey, Kyle Sullerud here, and in this video, we're going to look at your targeting. And this is the eighth video in a series of 14 videos to help you review and audit your YouTube ad campaign. To get the full guide with checklists and links to all of these videos, check the link associated with this video and you can download that guide from me. Today is going to be about targeting. Now this is a much, much bigger topic than I'm going to be able to cover in this video. In fact, I'm in the middle of recording another series of videos just on targeting where I go really deep into each of the targeting options. If you want to get that series when it comes out, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because that's where I will be releasing that. Today though, in this video, we're going to look at some, some basic things when it comes to targeting to see if maybe things are too uh, focused, too restrictive, and maybe there's opportunities to expand your targeting and get more results. Or maybe things are too wide and you need to narrow things a bit. So we're going to get into that in this video and see what we can look for. So first off, uh, I'll briefly mention the types of targeting. So we have keywords, we have audiences, we have placements, and we have topics. Now, demographics, you could say it's a type of targeting, but this is really one that we would layer on the other types of targeting. Uh, we wouldn't really just target demographics and demographics alone. I'll actually have a different video in this series specifically about demographics. Uh, but in this video, I'm just going to talk about those other four targeting options that I mentioned. First thing I want to point out is that I would not layer any of these other types of targeting options. So to layer the targeting, you would have two different types of targeting in the same ad group. So for example, you could have uh, audiences being targeted in an ad group and placements being targeted in an ad group. That would be telling Google, you only want your ad to show on these specific placements and only if someone is in one of those specific audiences. This can drastically uh, reduce the size, the pool of people who would, who would be able to see that ad. And it's really not necessary. If you're targeting good placements, you're targeting good audiences, you should be able to get good results and really scale a campaign out that way. Um, it, it's not necessary to get so focused that you're only targeting specific placements and specific audiences. Yeah, you could and should get good results if you're doing that. It's just going to be really hard to scale a campaign like that. So I don't recommend layering. I recommend separate campaigns for each type of targeting. That's what's going to help you get good results and scale. Okay. So take a look at your campaigns, see if anything is being layered. If you have multiple targeting options in the same ad group, I would go ahead and take this opportunity to split that stuff up. Let's look then at um, opportunities we might have to expand this campaign and really drive more results. First, I'm going to, I'm going to look at um, the placements. So I could, there are a, a few different placement campaigns set up. I could go into each one or what I'm going to do is just look at all of the campaigns at, at once and see what we're doing here for placements. So I can see that there are 1100 placements being targeted, either YouTube videos or YouTube channels. For a campaign like this, there should be a lot more than that. Uh, looks like we're targeting network marketing, which is a fairly big topic. I would expect there to be a lot of content on YouTube about network marketing. And because of that, I would want to target a lot more than 1,100 placements. I'm running campaigns targeting tens of thousands of placements. 
And the reason I take the time to do that is because placement targeting works so well. Not only do we know people are interested in those topics because they're watching videos about those topics, but they're watching a video in that moment, in that exact moment of interest. If you put an ad in front of them related to the content they are consuming, there's a very high likelihood they're going to consume your content and become a customer. So that's why placement targeting works so well. Now, um, there are a lot of different tools that you can use to actually research placements quickly. Uh, the, the old fashioned way is just to go to YouTube, do a search and collect the links one at a time. There are a number of tools that can help you with this. Of course, I'm very biased towards my own tool because I created it specifically for this and specifically to save time. It, it's super fast. You can go pull up a list of 300, 500 links at once, copy and paste them all into your campaign. So if you're not familiar with that tool, it's called Vid Hoarder, and uh, I encourage you to go check that out. But even if you're just going through YouTube, one by one adding links, it will be worth it. However, whatever uh, time that takes you, or if you're paying someone else to do that, however much time that actually takes them would still be worth it to collect as many placements links as you can. You should be able to find a lot more than 1100 in a, a campaign like this. Um, so that's, that's one thing to consider. And you can take a look at placements, keywords, um, audiences and topics, and just see if, if there are more opportunities, if there are more options that would fit with the target customer you're trying to reach. And targeting isn't just a one and done thing. You should constantly be adding new targeting options. Uh, that's how you scale a winning campaign. In this account, uh, if we look at audiences, then looks like we're only targeting some retargeting audiences. So there's opportunity here to add um, custom intent audiences, custom affinity audiences, and maybe there are some predefined audiences from Google that we could also add to this account. If we look at uh, keywords. I better go to the video campaigns because there, there are search campaigns in here too. So these are the video, these are the keywords that we're targeting on YouTube. You can see it's pretty um, specific. A lot of brand related keywords. We should be able to target a lot more keywords here and hopefully find some that also would bring good results in this account. And then uh, topics. Looks like there are no campaigns at all targeting topics. In this For this particular thing, since we're looking for network marketing related content, there actually is a, a topic. Uh, MLM and business opportunities. I am sure that would be a really good source of traffic for this campaign. And I'd recommend setting up a campaign, testing out that topic. And if it works, you should be able to scale pretty big just with that campaign, just targeting that topic. So some definite opportunities here. Um, one thing you'd wanna look for too when you're looking at targeting is, is anything that you're doing not working? So take a look at your keywords and placements, especially since uh, there's going to be so many of them and just sort those out and see, you know, this, this one specific video here, we've spent 1300 on 1300 euros it seems to be doing pretty well. It's, it's bringing a lot of conversions, uh, no conversion value, but this is a, a higher ticket product. So 
you know, just, just one or two sales could put this over the edge. I'm not saying to pause it right now based on the conversion value. I'm just saying you can find specific videos that maybe, uh, maybe aren't working well. Okay, this one has a much higher, or I'm sorry, that's cost per click. Where is the cost per conversion? Okay, this one has a much higher cost per conversion. Um, looking at this too, I'll, I'll mention that obviously the, the cost per conversion should not be lower than the cost per click. This means people are getting counted multiple times. Um, check out my the first video in this series on conversions i actually dug into this account to point out some issues with the conversion tracking but in general if if the tracking is something we want to to rely on here the cost per conversion here is a lot higher than average that might be a placement we would consider pausing right so you're looking for things like that in placements and especially in keywords, a lot of the time you'll have a, an obscure keyword and Google just kind of runs with it and they'll spend a lot of money on it and it might not be bringing good results. So you want to pay attention to that stuff. If things are bringing zero conversions and they're spending a lot of money, you want to turn those things off. If they're bringing some conversions, but at a high cost per conversion, you would want to turn those things off too. So I'll stop here again. I'm going to get very detailed with targeting and I'll be putting out a whole video series on this on my YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe there. And for this series, this campaign audit series, if you haven't downloaded the guide yet, go ahead, click the link with this video and download that guide, which will take you through the entire campaign audit. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle Sellerud, and I'll see you in the next video.